Good Thursday morning out there, everybody. Hope everybody's having a great week out there. Welcome back to another weather forecast discussion here this morning. Uh, in this video, I will be talking about wildfires, severe weather, also some heavy rainfall, a major heat wave continuing here through the middle of the month of August, as well as your tropical weather update here in this video, guys. Again, if you guys have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, guys, uh, definitely press the subscribe button down below, as well as like the video down below here after the video is over as well. That would be much appreciated, guys. Thank you to all of you who, who have, you know, subscribed to the YouTube channel all of you who have liked my videos and have commented down below here in the comment section here on my videos again uh Thank you guys very much. Uh, definitely appreciate it. Looking back to your Wednesday, August 3rd, though, lots of severe weather across portions of the Great Lakes, the mid-Mississippi Valley, and the southeast here. Lots of wind reports here. We have 153 wind reports that did come in here to the Storm Prediction Center storm reports. Also, two of them being significant here, five hail reports and also zero tornado reports. So that was the good news out of it. Uh, but we did have a lot of severe weather with the wind reports. So that did you know total up to around 158 total severe weather reports here from your Wednesday, August 3rd out there. Uh, much of that in Michigan, much of that in Illinois, and then down into portions there of the southeast from eastern Tennessee down through South Carolina and parts of western and south central North Carolina as well. But looking ahead here to today, we have a lot of alerts out there across the portions of the Northeast. We got heat alerts out there with heat advisories in those orange shaded areas, heat advisories across northern and northeastern Texas, much of Louisiana, southwestern portions there of Arkansas, and then some, you know, sporadic heat advisories getting up into Kansas, South Dakota, and parts there of uh, Montana as well. Even some flooding alerts, guys, around portions of the St. Louis area into southeastern Missouri, flooding alerts across Nevada, portions of California and New Mexico as well, and those green shaded areas, but I'm more concerned about these pink shaded areas up into portions of Montana and Idaho there. That is actually a red flag warning here for some fire weather concerns that are, you know, continuing into the daytime hours here today, essentially for most of Montana. Uh, so that is our concern right now. We actually do have a critical fire weather risk across northern Montana as we head through the day today, particularly this afternoon and this evening here, peak time frame here of the warmest temperatures and also the driest humidity during that time frame as well. Even a large zone of across most of Montana, getting into portions there of northeastern, uh, you know, Idaho, of you know, elevated uh, fire weather risk there as well. Even an elevated fire weather risk across portions of eastern Washington, eastern Oregon as well, and maybe even some isolated dry thunderstorms in there here in the mix as well with the potential, uh, you know, for some thunderstorms that don't necessarily produce a lot of rainfall, but definitely produce that lightning component, you know, that lightning component here that could actually start fires in these elevated and critical fire weather areas later on today. And it really doesn't help that we have dew points actually only rising into the 30s to near 40 degrees across Montana. Same thing can be said across portions of most of the Pacific Northwest into eastern Washington State, eastern Oregon State, and portions of uh, Idaho as well. Um, and you can see that it actually affects the relative humidity values in these brown shaded areas across most of Montana, even getting up here into portions of southern Saskatchewan, southern Alberta, uh, Canada. We even have those lower relative humidity values there as well. Um, in these brown shaded areas here, uh, particularly, you know, across eastern and central portions there of uh, Montana, you could have, you know, 20 to even uh, down as far as 10 percent chance or 10 percent relative humidity rather um, across these areas. So, yeah, we're seeing a lot of low humidity values, not a lot of moisture in these areas, um, and that is kind of fueling that fire weather risk. And it really doesn't help that we have that ridge of high pressure kind of sitting across New Mexico, southern Colorado, and the panhandle of Texas either, and that will continue here through the day today. We do have a little bit of a trough up into portions there of Alberta into British Columbia and Saskatchewan, Canada here, kind of helping with some cooler weather in the, you know, the Canadian provinces. But yeah, the United States for the most part is dominated by that heat out there. Look at all the wide spread 90s and lower 100s out there, not only for the portions of the middle of the country from Montana all the way to Texas, but look at the northeast down through the east coast. Yeah, 97 is the high temperature in Boston, 96 in New York City, uh, 97 in par uh, parts of the Washington, D.C. area. 95 in Raleigh, North Carolina, and even 92 down in the Jacksonville Beach area as we move into this afternoon here. And we're going to see a couple of kind of, you know, uh, areas of interest for some precipitation later on today as well. We got one of those across portions of the, you know, Ohio Valley with continued rainfall chances and some scattered showers and storms there. Even some more rainfall across the Gulf Coast there as well around New Orleans, getting over towards southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, near the Mobile, Alabama area. And of course, yes, we do actually still have that monsoonal weather across the 
the Four Corners region as well. Um, again, we do have a warm front that is going to kind of be moving slowly to the northeast, bringing all that heat and humidity up into those areas, like I was mentioning, uh, Montana, Wyoming, and Idaho, that will kind of fuel that fire weather risk here today as well. But concerning the severe weather threat, we're looking at three different areas for a marginal risk or, you know, a one out of five here on a scale from zero to five here from the Storm Prediction Center on their day one outlook. Uh, you know, a marginal risk extending from, you know, Vermont, New Hampshire, down through almost the entire state of New York, most of the state of Pennsylvania, getting down to northern uh, West Virginia, uh, western portions of Maryland, most of Ohio, getting down into portions of Kentucky, southern Indiana, and parts of western Tennessee. We even have a marginal risk across the panhandle of Texas into southwestern Oklahoma and up into central portions there of Montana as well. Mainly just a damaging wind risk here and maybe some lower end hail potential, but again, the tornado threat and the large hail potential really that over that one inch mar uh, diameter mark uh, really is not what we're looking at for today, mainly just some damaging winds. But yeah, we're going to see some more heavy rainfall out of this as well, especially across the Ohio Valley where they really do not need any more rainfall. A lot of saturated grounds, especially into Kentucky, especially into West Virginia and parts of you know, Ohio and the parts of you know Tennessee there. You, they just do not need any more rainfall. And unfortunately... We're going to see more of the same here as we head to this afternoon and this evening with widespread rainfall amounts of a half an inch up to, uh, you know, around an inch of rain as well. And that even does include parts of southern Ontario here south of the Toronto area as we kind of move into this afternoon as well. And you can clearly see across the monsoonal areas from New, uh, New Mexico, southern portions of Colorado, westward uh, towards Utah, Arizona, Nevada, and portions of central and southern California, some very, you know, much needed rainfall, some beneficial rains across these areas with widespread widespread amounts of a quarter inch to even up to three quarters of an inch, especially as you get into northeastern New Mexico or central California. So that is some good news as well. But right in between there, guys, where we're seeing all that heat, yeah, we're not seeing much in the way of precipitation, and that goes the same for portions of the Pacific Northwest as well. As we move into Friday here, um, getting toward the weekend, yeah, we have that ridge continue to you know stay anchored across portions of the central plains, a little bit of a trough up into portions of the Canadian prairies, keeping that storm track generally farther to the north and all that heat bottled up here in the United States part of things. And yeah, we're seeing that continuing as we head into your Friday, August 5th time frame. And look at the widespread high temperatures here of 100 degrees or higher across uh, the central, the northern, and even southern plains as we move into Friday here, August 5th. Uh, yeah, we're seeing widespread 100s from the Rapid City area down through portions of, uh, you know, Wichita, Topeka, Kansas, getting down here into portions of Oklahoma City, Tulsa, and in toward the Dallas-Fort Worth area, getting down toward Austin, Texas. Yeah, a lot of these areas are going to be baking in that heat once again and we're going to be watching a couple boundaries we got kind of a stationary boundary and kind of a uh, you know slow moving cold front across new england getting into the mid-atlantic bringing some scattered showers and storms there and then we're seeing a new boundary here with a cold front dragging its way to the south and east across portions of the dakotas into minnesota and back toward the west here with some widespread rainfall uh, rainfall across the inner mountain west which is actually a welcome sight as some of these areas actually don't get much rainfall whatsoever um so that is some good news as well with the next you know cold front that'll start to drop southeast also with the cold front will be the continued threat for at least a low end chance for severe weather with a marginal risk across western um, Minnesota, the eastern Dakotas, and northern Nebraska. Even a smaller marginal risk for northern Virginia getting into Maryland as well as we head into your Friday afternoon. Primarily again, just some damaging winds. The hail threat and tornado threat are relatively low. But again, even with that damaging wind threat here for the severe weather side of things, we still have the uh, you know the potential for some minor to even moderate flooding out there um, with some of these you know heavier rainfall bursts with some of these heavier thunderstorms uh, from the I-95 corridor from Boston all the way down to New York City, northern New Jersey, southeastern portions there of uh, Pennsylvania, around the Philadelphia, Baltimore areas, getting down toward Washington, D.C. And again, unfortunately for portions of Kentucky and uh, southern Ohio, again, some heavy rainfall averaging around a half inch to up to upwards of an inch of rainfall there. But another cold front incoming across the eastern Dakotas into portions of Minnesota will drop southeast and bring another threat for a half inch to three three quarters of an inch of rain across those areas. And again, much needed rainfall across the inner mountain west here with all of that monsoonal moisture moving up from western portions of Mexico into the western and southwestern United States. So that is actually some very good news as well. 
But it's time for the bad news, unfortunately, guys. And actually, the 6- to 10-day temperature outlook from the Climate Prediction Center from August 9th through the 13th time frame here um, actually does show that above normal temperature regime really continuing as we move into portions of the middle of August for much of the same areas that have just been baking in that heat all summer long. And that just looks to continue here uninterrupted as we kind of move into early August here and even late August, or uh, actually middle of August, rather, as well. Um, yeah, we're seeing a lot of monsoonal moisture here across, you know, Arizona, uh, portions of Nevada, Southern California, Southern Utah, Western portions there of New Mexico. And they're expecting, you know, below normal temperatures with kind of all that cloud cover out there, all that rainfall. And again, you see Alaska, guys, look at that central Alaska, especially around the Juneau, Alaska area. Yeah, we're seeing well below normal temperatures there. And that is because there's going to be a strong upper level trough sitting around portions of the Aleutian Islands into western Canada, kind of bringing some cooler weather and kind of an active storm track across Alaska here over, the, you know, the middle portion of August. And you can see here across the United States here, um, you know, the the mainland United States, yeah, we have a lot of below normal precipitation from the upper Midwest, the central southern plains, those familiar areas that have been dry will stay dry as we get toward the middle of the month. We do have a little bit of a stripe of some above normal precipitation, at least slightly favored from the New England region, getting down through the mid-Atlantic, the Tennessee Valley, and parts of Texas, especially southern Texas, as we get in towards the August 9th through 13th period. And you can clearly see across the western United States, the very good news that lies ahead is the above normal uh, precipitation potentially well above normal in some of these areas around Salt Lake City, Las Vegas, getting into portions of northern Arizona, maybe even southern Idaho toward the Boise, Idaho area. Um, again, a lot of these areas need the rainfall, so that is some good news as we get toward the middle of the month. And kind of tracking the temperatures as we get toward the middle of the month time frame as well with kind of the 850 millibar temperatures here, we're actually starting to see um, you know, some uh, cold fronts dropping south out of Canada here. You can see that with the cooler blue colors here moving across the northern plains. But ahead of that, all that heat out there as well. And we're also seeing a reintroduction of another high pressure system with some, you know, another ridging develop, you know, ridging development across portions of the British Columbia region into Pacific Northwest as well, south of the Aleutian Islands. And you can clearly see what I was mentioning here with that strong upper level trough, you know, moving across Alaska there into Western Canada. That will be holding strong with below normal temperatures there as we get towards the week the end of the weekend into early next week but things start to change a little bit for the u.s here uh, down toward the south across portions of the pacific northwest we see a lot more heat building in that cold front from the weekend continuing to drop south here potentially to the central plains but it might not drop as far south um, as you know cold fronts earlier in the year here and it might only drop as far south as oklahoma the texas panhandle and that's really about it before the cold front starts to kind of wash out and then we'll have kind of another introduction to a Another high pressure system and ridge that will kind of collapse over top of this, you know, uh, troughing across the eastern United States and the southern United States as we get toward the middle of the month of August. And you can really see that take shape as we get toward the following weekend here, August 13th and 14th, and even the 15th time frame across the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, the Northern Plains, and all the way southward towards Texas as well. And then we'll start to see ridging building up toward the Aleutian Islands as well. Looking at this here, at the, you know, at the surface, yeah, the European forecast forecast model is showing widespread middle 90s, if not lower 100s, trying to be shown here as we get towards the next weekend's time frame. So that is something we'll definitely be able to kind of watch as we get towards that, you know, the week uh, next weekend here and, you know, the weekend beyond as well as we're just seeing a lot of heat out there. And that does, you know, be reflected on the GEM, the CMC, you know, the Canadian forecast model kind of in the sem uh, similar, uh, you know, similar location with the heat out there. You got the trough across the eastern U.S., exiting the United States, and you got that ridge of high pressure returning across the middle of the country as well. And with that ridge of high pressure returning, we have to watch the jet stream as well. When you have a jet stream oriented like this here with a zonal flow over top of that ridge, and then you have that northwesterly flow, you always got to watch here on the northern and northeastern periphery for some storm complexes that could round this ridge here and produce more heavy rainfall, more severe weather. Again, kind of far out. It's not really showing too much right now, but this could change as we get toward the middle of August here, and it really 
really continues to take shape here with a zonal to you know west northwest or northwesterly flow in the mid levels of the atmosphere as we kind of get towards that you know middle of August time frame around the 13th, 14th, and 15th time frame and possibly even beyond as well. Looking at your tropical weather update, guys, we're looking here at a very you know large area of interest across the eastern Pacific Basin, moving you know west out of the uh, Central Americas and south of the Mexican border. There, yeah, we're talking about a lot of um a lot of development potential over the next few days. Uh, this has a 90% chance of development over the next five days, but a 50-50 shot here at potential development over the next 48 hours to so the next two days as well. Also an area of interest just to the east-southeast here of Hawaii, the Hawaiian Islands is at about a 30% chance of development here in the next five days as well. So we'll continue to watch this area as well for potential development moving forward. But the Atlantic, the Caribbean, and the Gulf, guys, very quiet. This looks to remain the case here as well. We got the high-pressure system dominant across the central Atlantic, keeping all of the convection kind of, you know, coming off the African coast and, the, you know, with the Saharan dust, we're really just not seeing any robust tropical features with this here, at least through the next week or so. So that is something uh, that is kind of unusual, but we'll continue to watch that. I really do think the hurricane season is going to start to ramp up as we get towards late August and especially early September. So that will be something to watch as well. Considering that here as well, we have the La Nina index here showing a moderate La Nina returning right now. Now we actually, you know, just coming out of a weak La Nina, we're getting back into the moderate to even locally strong type of La Nina here as we get towards the middle of August. And that does signify here stronger heat waves, stronger drought potential, and also here a stronger monsoonal season and hurricane season upcoming as well. Uh, and this could actually, you know, improve the severe weather potential here as we get toward the fall, um, you know, make it more intense. So we'll continue to watch that as we get toward the fall months as well. But we'll continue to watch the near term right now uh, for the weather. Thank you guys for watching my video. I hope you guys liked it. Again, remember to like my video down below. Press the thumbs up button. Much appreciated. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll be able to get to those later on today. And remember, most importantly, guys, to subscribe to the YouTube channel, guys. Thank you for getting me over to, uh, you know, over 500 subscribers that is much appreciated guys and again remember to subscribe here uh, by hitting the subscribe button down below thank you guys for watching my video have a great thursday out there guys and i'll see you in the next video